Welcome to a new update. Today we're going to have a short update about the altcoins. The altcoins are doing okay, I would say. Bitcoin has been seeing a pretty heavy correction and through that we also saw that altcoins have been correcting of which Ethereum has been showing a lot of pain um, in terms of having a pretty substantial bounce after the ETF approval of Bitcoin. But it's giving back the entire move, not in USDT, because in USDT we've already seen that there was a substantial correction taking place for Ether. But if we are looking at the Bitcoin pair, there's some more downside at this point, or at least it's giving back the push. So we're going to look at Ethereum from a technical standpoint, like literally, um, and from a TA perspective, where we're going to look at scenarios on how we can execute the actual trading in Ethereum. And we're going to have an overall look on the markets because the markets seem ready to start moving again. But the question is when, and the question is what of the markets is going to move from here. Before we continue, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also make sure to check out all our social media platforms like X and Instagram, where I'm providing daily content on the markets. And additionally, um, make sure to check out our sponsor, who is a Bitfavo, the easiest to use exchange with more than 200 altcoins where you can trade them or you can invest in them. And I'm using it as my swing trade platform because of all the options that they have when it comes to altcoins. And uh, I think it's the easiest to use exchange in Europe. So make sure that if you're getting started in the markets to, um, to be able to start with Bitfavo. Now, when we're looking at the markets, I've got the ETH Bitcoin chart up here. And to be fair, I think that the odds of having an actual bottom is significant for Ethereum. So what we're seeing is still the exact same, which is that we've got this bullish divergence on the weekly time frame, which resulted into a fact that we have been taking the liquidity beneath this low, right? So we took the liquidity and that actually caused the chain reaction to the other side, which gave us the bullish divergence that we actually wanted to have. But now that it's a pretty heavy correction taking place, or at least a rejection taking place on Ether, and I'll show you what actually happened. So we took the liquidity beneath the low, and I'll mark that with this green box. Um, we've got the bullish divergence here, which is something good, and it's still valid if it continues to do so. But we are continuing what we have been doing in the previous period, which is we are constantly rejecting the previous support um, as resistance. So technically what you're seeing here is a copy paste of what we have been seeing previously. Here we've got a rejection. Here we've got a rejection. Here we've got a rejection. Here we've got a continuous rejection taking place in those regions, as you can see here. And there's another rejection taking place here as well. Not even that far, but it rejected. So there is a lot of liquidity that we can squeeze once we start to break this trend. But in order to actually add on bullishness on Ethereum, it needs to break this level. So why is Ether such a weak asset at this point? And I'm going to discuss a few more after this too. First of all, Ethereum in itself is in a window of nothing, which means that Ethereum is probably the settlement layer that we are, all are going to use. But in order to get there, we need to get some upgrades going to make sure that the settlement layer works. That's also why layer twos are moving because the upgrades that are coming for Ethereum and one is on the test nets right now, those are going to fix the transaction cost for layer twos, but it is going to decrease the transaction cost on Ethereum as well, making it less deflationary, but it's more accessible for other layers to be able to work on Ethereum as it is will be reducing the costs by 90%. But given that we launched on the test net, but there was a slight glitch, market started to puke, Ethereum Foundation needed to sell some more to fund the actual uh, developments. So there was some negative spiral starting to heat up there. And technically, we are looking at a rejection here. Now, is Ethereum still going to move? I think it is. I think it's a good bet to go for. I think it's scalable and it is secure. 
but it needs to involve those upgrades and it also needs to get more approval when it comes to the um, ETF that we're facing in potentially May because in the last two weeks, which was after the approval, we saw that Ethereum was getting a delay on the ETF approval, which is completely fine, but that is always causing some downward spiral on the markets, which we are seeing here. So in the end, I think Ethereum is still the one to go for. The question is, if you're looking at the chart, when and how? If you're looking at it from an investment perspective and if you have a long horizon, there is no problem investing into something like Ethereum, um, especially when it has been into a downtrend for more than two years and it's looking for a reversal relatively soon. Now, in terms of trading, there are a few things that are important to watch when you're looking at the Bitcoin pair, which is one scenario would be taking the liquidity uh, moving down again and then waiting for the reclaim to start activating your longs. That will be a scenario. The second scenario is that we break above this entire crucial level and then we start to move upwards with Ethereum. Ultimately, we are down approximately 40% since the high. Uh, let me see. We are 39% uh, down from the actual high that we created in January 2022 or actually December 2021, which means that there is still a lot of upside to be going for. And I think that Ethereum didn't have the chances that Bitcoin actually had in the previous period. And when we look at Ethereum against UCT, it is still consolidating here, just like the total market cap is currently consolidating and holding above a crucial level that I suspect that once we start to move with the markets that you can technically expect that Bitcoin is going to stay sideways. If we go back to Bitcoin, it's just going to do something like this, or at least the scenario that I've been providing in the update yesterday, which means that we're going into a sideways window when it comes to Bitcoin. When you're looking at Ethereum, I think that this is going to pace up, especially since the upside is around 55% here, which means that if we are going to see the exact same in the total market cap in terms of billions to be added, I think the total two, which is excluding Bitcoin, is still a lot of upside to gain here. And that is primarily going to come from Ethereum. So I think that in the upcoming period, we're going to see the upwards momentum coming from Ethereum and other layers, which most likely will bring the total two market cap to 1.25 trillion. Now, there are a few altcoins that are still like consolidating before the next push. A few ecosystems like some are doing really well. Injective, Solana, both are doing extremely great. Um, the layers on Ethereum are also starting to wake up a little bit since the correction. At least we have had some bounces. Sui is doing absolutely amazing. <clears throat> and I think it will continue to do so. Um, just like Sai will probably be doing really well. But there are many coins and ecosystems doing well because Ethereum is not doing well. So what are we looking for in terms of price action? Well, if we're looking at Chainlink, we can see that Chainlink is currently consolidating before making a next push to the upside. I think that in the market, we are going to look at this as the next resistance zone, which means that we still have a lot to gain before we have a pretty heavy correction across the markets. So Chainlink in itself is currently at 14 bucks and it's going to thrive when Ethereum is going to step up its entire game. As you can see, Chainlink is currently flipping a crucial level for support. Um, it's going to consolidate, but once it gets into the resistance area again, that is the period where you want to be positioned into it and you're going to be positioned into something when it is actually not moving at all, which is the current case. Some other ecosystems that are not doing much at this point are Polkadot, for instance, that is currently searching for a retest of the lows on the Bitcoin pair, but at least it's looking for accumulation, which we're currently in. And if you look at the UCT pair, you can see that's still a crucial resistance to break. And then it will also start to pace up when we can expect a rally towards 30 bucks. Atom is a similar ecosystem that we're currently looking at for a potential breakout. Airfax and Solana and Matic have been seeing this breakout towards this target already. Atom is currently creating a higher low that I'm be looking at for a potential breakout. So there are a lot of things that we can look at from a perspective of coins that are still likely to start breaking to the upside. And once Ethereum starts to move, 
you can also start looking at um, assets that have not been moving at all, which is DeFi. So everything surrounding synthetics or everything surrounding Curve or anything with the DeFi section, probably the narrative will start to wake up when Ethereum starts to pick up. So I'm going to look at positioning myself into them and then DeFi will start to do well as well. Have a good day. I'll be back on Saturday. Ciao.